skip over that. Uh, basically, the same thing, but it does a parallel circuit with each branch alter. You're ultimately going to get the same out. Says voltage drop can be determined in two ways, right? By measuring available voltage before and after the load and subtracting the two readings. Is that what we did here? Right? We knew what our measurement was here. We looked at what the difference was. Or by measuring voltage across the load directly. Right? So what does that essentially mean? I'm looking at between these two meter leads, right, is ultimately going to be a resistance, right? So if I take these two meter leads and I put one here and I put one here, here's my red lead, here's my black lead, I'm going to measure just the voltage here that's being utilized in the circuit at that given time, right? Everybody see the difference? It has to do really with my meter lead placement. Now, what was the difference between putting my meter lead here and putting my meter lead here? Here, what am I measuring? You, let's say through the whole circuit. Sir. I'm measuring this entire thing, right? I'm measuring between these two points. So by moving this up here, I'm directly reading this point for a three millivolt drop right between this connection, as an example. So if I had a circuit, for example, where I've got, you know, and I'm using 12, but clearly it's going to be different than 12, right? I've got my fuse. <coughs> Right, I've got bulb number one, I've got bulb number two, and let's say this was a I don't know, two ohm bulb, this is a one ohm bulb, right? What's my voltage going to be at the top of this? 12. Right. So if I left my, my black lead here, right, and I did just available voltage, how would I know how much this used? I would take a measurement here. Right? And let's say here it was uh, it was eight volts, right? How much did oh, this yeah, use? Good. It used right. four volts. Now, the only thing that we're doing between this worksheet and the last one, right, instead of using available voltage and subtracting to get your voltage drop across the load, I'm changing my meter lead placement, right? I'm moving, instead of put, putting this down here and this here, I'm putting them both here, and what I read directly is gonna be this number. So essentially I don't have to subtract because I'm taking a direct reading of what is being used between those two meter leads. Make sense? So this is a lot better than what we just did before because if I'm dynamically testing a circuit and this bolt is accessible to me, I'm going right to the bulb with my two meter leads, right? With some sort of back probes or some, some way of getting right on that circuit. Whether it's moderately intrusive or not. And you're ultimately taking the reading directly at that bulb instead of going, all right, well, I gotta take a measurement here, and I gotta take a measurement here, and I gotta take a measurement here. No, you go right to a, a direct point and you can kind of use a split by foot. We'll get deeper into that as we go along. For now, uh, let's look at the, the next rule. It says the same methods described above for loads can be used to measure voltage drop between any two points in a circuit. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, that basically means if I want to know what the difference is between this point in the circuit and this point in the circuit, I can put them right here. Right? Uh, so really, any two points in the circuit, whatever's between those meter leads is what you're going to read in terms of the voltage. Right, so if I leave this meter lead here and I measure between here and here, I'm going to measure 12 volts. And essentially, I drop 12 volts across this whole thing. If I measure here, I'm going to read what? Eight volts. Eight volts, because this is a higher resistance. It's going to use more voltage. So kind of get the idea of what we're doing. We're just changing the meter lead placement. We're reading directly what's between the two meter leads in terms of the voltage that was utilized in the circuit. And what's going to happen? The voltage that drops, notice we used four here. I'm gonna have eight here. Why? Why did this use eight volts and that used four? This was a higher resistance 
load, right, or bulk than this one. So the, the higher resistance is going to utilize more voltage. So that first exercise we did in the first night of class last week, where one bulb was lit and the other bulb was out, the higher resistance lit that, or was the bulb that lit, right? There was no voltage left over for the lower resistance bulb. The majority of that was used up or dropped across that first load. And it won't matter the placement if your two ohm bulb was on top. Yep. It would still be the same numbers, just reversed. That's it. So, good question. So I move that up here, right? So now I have a two ohm on the top, right? Is that what we said? Yeah, that's right. And a one ohm on the bottom. So now how did I kind of figure out what this drop would be? Well, how would you figure that out? Thank you. <laughs> that was brilliant. Uh, what do I have to do to these resistances in series circuit? Right, so I'd have ultimately three amps, right? So ultimately, Four amps. Yeah. Uh, sorry, three ohms, right? And four amps, right? So basically, what would I do? You need to, to isolate the load. So how would I know how much each of these was going to drop? Uh, 12 divided by two, or 12 volts divided by two amps. Gives you what? That gives you six amps though, doesn't it? So that, that would be correct because you're sharing the six. Mm. All right, think about that. This is we'll get back value. to you. But what you'll know is, is that basically this is getting two thirds of the voltage. This is getting a third of the voltage, right? So you got two. Uh, two thirds of 12 is it? Two times four and one times four. Right? So if I cover that up, if I want to solve for voltage, what do I have to do? Ohm's law. That's going to drop eight volts. Right? That times four. And what do I know about voltage drop? I add them up, and what does it have to equal? Everybody good with this so far? So you start to see where we're going with this. If we're building a diagnostic game plan, we know all these rules. Life is easy. If we don't know these rules, we try to diagnose. It's kind of like working blindfolded. Where did you come up with the four amps? <clears throat> well, the four amps I got by, right, I had this resistance and this resistance. In a series circuit, right, meaning one path, Oh, three divided into 12 gives you four. That's gives what you get four amps. amps. Yep, I used Ohm's law and I added these together. I came up with three ohms, right? And ultimately these have to work out. So three into 12 gives me four, or three times four gives me 12, or 12 divided by four gives me three, right? So remember the EIR, or the volts, ohms, and amps, right? The Ohm's law rules, there was the, basically if I wanted to solve for one, I covered the one I wanted to solve up, and either multiply or divide, uh, accordingly. And so you have 12, so you get 2 times 4 equals 8, and then 1 times 4 is 4 volts. Yep, so in the, in the case of this, right, I've got this resistance, and I know what my amperage is, so the amount of voltage this piece is going to use is 2 times 4, gives me 8. This is 1 ohm uh, times 4 amps, gives me 4 volts, right? Take the two of them together, you got your 12 volts of, of uh, source voltage. You're going to add up. Right? How do you get the resistance? Yeah. Well, in a theoretical world, this works really, really easily. For the most part, um, unless you know what the pre-specified resistance or dynamic resistance is, you're not necessarily going to know. You're going to see a result, right? So if you have two bulbs that are the same bulb and the same part number, chances are they're the same wattage bulb, which means your resistance value can sort of be implied that they're going to be identical, right? In that case, what's my voltage value? It doesn't really matter what these numbers are at that point because if they're the same resistance, what's going to happen to those two bolts? They're going to split it exactly equally. Right? Mathematically, it works out that way. So in a, in a case of that where I had something wired in series, which it's not that often, but let's say there's two bolts, two bolts wired in series, if they're not using equal values, what do I know? I've got a problem somewhere. Where's the problem? Well, it depends, right? It depends what my voltage measurement is in each, each leg of this circuit, okay? So, uh, the same method described above can be used <coughs> to measure voltage drop between any two points in the circuit, obviously. Uh, 
Uh, next bullet says usually a circuit has only one load per branch, right? Like in a, in a parallel circuit for the most part is what we see in a car. Any additional load is typically caused by unwanted resistance such as a bad connection or a poor ground. What does that mean? If I go right to that hole and I go across that hole, what should I see? A single branch circuit or a single load circuit. 12 volts. If I don't see 12 volts consumed by that, right, by going across the power and ground with that bulb lit up or that motor powered up, I got a problem somewhere else. Make sense? What's the next one say? The sum of all the voltage drops must equal the source voltage, right? Voltage drop here is 8 volts. Voltage drop here is 4 volts. What do they add up to? They have to add up to 12. On this one, same thing here, right? We sort of calculated that in each connection there was going to be some sort of voltage drop because there's a resistance across every connection, no matter really how good the connection is, unless it's soldered or you know just a single wire strand. But even in a single wire, there's some resistance, right? So if I have a long length of wire, right, I'm going to have ultimately uh, resistances, and each point of testing there's going to be a, a lower value, so there's going to be a 